it would be preferable in a certain meaningful sense if OpenAI could just be a, for a non-profit from now until the mission of OpenAI is complete. However, one of the things that's worth pointing out is the very significant cost of these data centers. I'm sure you're reading about various AI startups and the amount of money they are raising, the great majority of which goes to the cloud providers. Why is that? Well, the reason so much money is needed is because this is the nature of these large neural networks. They need the compute. End of story. You can see something like this. It's all, you can see a divide that's now happening between academia and the AI companies. So for a long time, for many decades, cutting edge research in AI took place in academic departments, in universities. That kept being the case up until the mid 2010s. But at some point, when the complexity and the cost of these projects started to get very large, it no longer remained possible for universities to be competitive. And now universities need a, a, a university research in AI needs to find some other way in which to contribute. Those ways exist. They're just different from the way they're used to and different from the way the companies are contributing right now. Now, with this context, you're saying, okay, the thing about nonprofit and nonprofit is that people who give money to a nonprofit never get to see any, any of it back. It is a real donation. And believe it or not, it is quite a bit harder to convince people to give money to a nonprofit. And so we, so, so we think, what's, what's the solution there? Or what is a good course of action? So we came up with an idea that, to my knowledge, is unique in all corporate structures in the world. The OpenAI corporate structure is absolutely unique. OpenAI is not a for-profit company. It is a capped profit company. And I'd like to explain what that means. What that means is that Equity in OpenAI can be better seen as a bond rather than equity in a normal company. The main feature of a bond is that once it's paid out, it's gone. So in other words, OpenAI has a finite obligation to its investors as opposed to an infinite obligation to that normal companies have. And does that include the founders? Do the founders have equity in OpenAI? So... Sam Altman does not have equity, but the other founders do. And is it capped or is it unlimited? It is capped. And how does that cap? Is that capped? Uh, because the, the founders, I presume, didn't buy in unless it's capped at the nominal share value. Or... Um, I'm not sure I understand the question precisely, but well, what I can it's, say, it's, like yeah. what, what, what I, I can answer the part which I do understand, which okay. is like, there is certainly like it is there are it is a different it is different from normal startup equity, but there are some similarities as well. Where the earlier you join the company, the higher the cap is, because then the larger cap is needed to attract the initial investors. As the company continues to succeed, the cap decreases. And why is that important? It's important because it means that the company, when once when once all the obligation to investors and employees are paid out, OpenAI becomes a nonprofit again. And you can say, this is totally crazy. What are you talking about? Like, it's not going to change anything. But it's worth considering what we expect. Like, it's worth looking at what we think AI will be. I mean, we can look at what AI is today. And I think it is not at all inconceivable for OpenAI to achieve its, to pay out its obligation to the investors and their employees, become a non-profit at around the time when perhaps the computers will become so capable, where the economic disruption will be very big, where this transition will be very beneficial. 